In this video, we're going to explore the actual eigenfunctions of angular momentum. Recall we were calling those the YLM for our integer or half integer L's, and M between minus L and L. And these had the property that if you hit YLM with L hat Z, you get back H bar M YLM. And if you hit that with L squared, you get back H bar squared L times L plus 1 times YLM. So they're eigenfunctions of the L hat Z and the L hat squared operators. Uh, just recall how we find eigenfunctions. So if we had Hamiltonian uh, and we want to find eigenfunctions of the Hamiltonian operator, for a Hamiltonian which is, say, of this form, we got second derivative and m omega squared x squared, as it is for the quantum harmonic oscillator, the way we found eigenfunctions in this case was we would write down the differential equation, ordinary differential equation in this case, even though I've written a partial, for psi sub n. So here's our differential equation. And we then solve this ordinary differential equation for psi sub n. We found in this particular case the solutions were kind of complicated. Um, they looked like uh, a constant times Hermite polynomials times an exponential of minus one-half c squared, where c was defined in terms of x uh, in an earlier video. Okay. So that's the idea of what we're doing here. We want to be able to write down a ordinary differential equation. So what we need to know are what are lz and l squared in terms of actual derivatives, so that we can write down ordinary differential equations and then solve those ordinary differential equations. So recall that the l vector, the angular momentum vector, is r cross p which in 3D you could write as r vector, not r hat there, uh, cross h bar over i nabla vector, or del vector, where the del vector in spherical coordinates you'd write as r hat d by dr plus theta hat 1 over r d by d theta plus phi hat 1 over r sine theta d by d phi. Okay, uh, remember, whenever we're writing hats in this context right now, um, these were all for unit vectors, uh, not operators. So don't get yourself confused on what's a unit vector and what's an operator. Uh, recall that r vector is r times r hat. And so the angular momentum operator should look like, well, just expanding this out, I get r times r cross r hat cross r hat. Uh, and I guess I get an r hat cross theta hat term. And I get a r hat cross phi hat term, uh, and I've already canceled some r's in this. Okay, there we go. r hat cross r hat zero, r hat cross theta hat is phi hat, and r hat cross phi hat is minus theta hat. So the angular momentum operator written in terms of spherical coordinates would look something like this. Uh, which doesn't look too bad, but in order to compute LZ, we're going to have to write this in Cartesian coordinates. And so we're going to have to write phi hat in Cartesian coordinates, at least in Cartesian unit vectors. And we're going to have to write theta hat in terms of Cartesian unit vectors. I'm going to leave the cosine theta, cosine phi, or the theta and phi dependence, but just write it in terms of Cartesian unit vectors. Okay, so then when I insert those in, then for my angular momentum vector, or rather angular momentum operator at this point, uh, I get in the x direction this term. In the y direction, I get another combination of derivatives. Looks very similar, except instead of sine phi, I have cosine phi. Instead of cosine phi, I have sine phi. And there's a j hat, again, in the that means in the y direction. And in the z direction, I have h bar over i d by d phi in the z direction, with a k hat. So this quantity, this first term here, is l hat x. This quantity here is l hat y. And then this quantity here is what we were looking for from the beginning. This is l hat z. So we are now able to find the ordinary differential equation for the eigenfunctions of the LZ operator. So let's do that. So recall LZ operates on YLM, and YLM is in principle now a function of theta and phi, by giving h bar m times YLM 
of theta and phi. So now let's insert what we know about LZ. So this turns into h bar over i d by d phi of ylm. And that must be equal to h bar m ylm. So, okay, the h bars cancel. We solve this ordinary differential equation that tells us that the function ylm is, well, maybe some constants out front I'm writing here, some theta dependence, which I can't determine here, but I can determine the phi dependence. The phi dependence should be e to the i m phi. So again, the first term is some normalization constant, which I'm just going to pull out here. Um, there is a function of theta here, which we don't know anything about, but we do know the phi dependence now. It's e to the i m phi. So this is good. We now have half, I'd say about half, of the ylm eigenfunction, but now we need to know what is the theta dependence. In order to figure out the theta dependence, we're going to have to look at the operator L squared. So recall L squared is, well, one way of writing it is L plus L minus plus LZ squared minus H bar LZ. Uh, and if you remember, L plus or minus is LX plus or minus I LY. But I have LX and LY up here. And so I can just do this algebra and I'm just going to quote a result. After a bit of algebra, we get plus or minus h bar e to the i phi d by d phi plus or minus i cotangent of theta d by d theta. Yes, that's e to the i phi, not e to the i m phi. We don't know anything about the solutions yet, okay? Okay, so now I construct L squared, uh, inserting for L plus, L minus, and LZ. Again, there's a lot of algebra in here that's not terribly interesting, so I'm just going to write the end result, though you should make sure that this works. So I have a term entirely with derivatives with respect to theta, and then I have a term entirely with derivatives with respect to phi. So now that we have a functional form in terms of derivatives for L squared, we can find eigenfunctions of L squared in the same way that we saw for LZ. So L squared, acting on YLM, should give us h bar squared L, L plus 1, times YLM back. Okay, and so now this is the thing we're going to insert in for L squared, so let's do that. So we get, and I'll try and speed this up a little bit, but just rewriting everything that I had up top, operating on YLM, and then I have my phi derivative operating on YLM. And don't forget on the right hand side we have h bar squared L, L plus 1 acting on YLM. There's the h bar squareds that can cancel. Uh, we can simplify this a lot by using what we know about YLM. In particular, we know that YLM we wrote earlier as a constant times a function of theta, PLM of theta and an e to the i m phi. The constants will just cancel out on all sides because they're on each side. We can insert the theta and phi dependence though in here. Uh, the phi dependence will cancel after we take the phi derivative. So at the end of this calculation, I get the first term, which is just a derivative with respect to the PLM, the theta dependence. The th phi derivatives bring down minus m squared times PLM. And on the right-hand side, I still have L, L plus 1 times PLM. Okay. So we need to now try and solve this ordinary differential equation for PLM. And it looks pretty hairy. Um, but it turns out uh, solutions to this differential equation are, in fact, known. Uh, there are a set of special functions, which may not terribly surprise you. Um, and in particular, they are called the associated Legendre functions, not polynomials in this case, the associated Legendre functions. Uh, and again, we label them PLM of cosine of theta. So they're functions of cosine of theta. PLM of x for any x is defined to be 1 minus x squared to the absolute value of m over 2 times d by dx to the power absolute value m of PL of x where PL are our usual Legendre polynomials that we know and love. 
in a later video, we're going to look at some of the more properties of the associated Legendre polynomials and uh, see what our eigenfunctions actually look like.